Hello friends, how are you? I hope everyone is doing great. So today I'm going to discuss about REST client. So Spring Boot 6.1 introduces the REST client, a new synchronous HTTP client. Okay. So basically it will provide like modern API and streamlined API for like synchronous access. So before that, if you want like communicate like uh, with like RESTful web services, right? So there are different clients and like different templates are available in the market. So here I mentioned like three things. One is like REST template, web client and faint client, right? So the first one is REST template, right? So I think uh, REST template basically, it's commonly used for like spring based applications for like synchronous communication with RESTful services, right? But the older REST template is a complex with many overloaded methods and it will exposing like extensive HTTP capabilities in a template style class, right? So after that web client is came into the market. So web client is basically um, it supports like both like synchronous and asynchronous HTTP request. So making it suitable for like reactive programming and non-blocking IO basically, right? So it uses in Spring web, web Flex applications which are built on reactive program model basically, right? So uh, basically it will making it like ideal for like highly concurrent and event driven applications. If you want to deal with this web client, basically you need to include that Spring Spring Boot starter webflex dependency, okay? And after that, and Fane client. I think Fane client is a declarative web service client that is developed by Netflix and integrated into the Spring Cloud, okay? So basically, uh, it often used in microservices architecture basically, particularly with Spring Cloud, to make it easier to call the other microservices, right? So, and so if you want to deal with like uh, this uh, Fane client, okay, basically you need to include Spring Cloud Starter Open Fane dependency in your project. And so, what if Spring Boot provides a modern streamlined API for efficient synchronous HTTP access, okay? So, so that is like REST client. So overall summary is Spring Boot 3.1 is Spring 6.1 introduces this improvements, tremendous improvements in HTTP access scores by using this REST client. So uh, the REST client can provide some modern streamlined API for efficient synchronous HTTP access, making it an excellent choice for like project seeking straightforward communication with remote APIs basically. Okay. So the overall summary of recommendations are like if you're dealing with like synchronous endpoints or like synchronous endpoints or asynchronous endpoints depends on your requirement you can choose rest client or like web client here so if your requirement is like synchronous endpoint right so you can prefer the rest client over the rest template as i discussed previously rest template is a legacy one and it has like many overloaded methods to use like this REST client, you can just include the Spring Boot starter web dependency. Whereas if you want to deal with like asynchronous endpoints, right? So then you can prefer the web client, especially like for asynchronous and stream streaming needs. So to deal with this web clients, basically you need to include the Spring Boot starter web flex dependency. Okay. To make use this mock API, okay, this is going to provide like some of the resources eventually i'm going to make use these resources in my services right so uh, i'm going to explain how to create these projects and the resources so first of all like we need to uh, hit this endpoint and after that here we need to create project right so the project name so you can provide like any project name i'm going to uh, work with like products so products okay and after that, we need to provide your API prefix. So I'm going to take our API prefix as API. And after that, let's click on this create button, right? So it's created our project and it's going to provide like our API endpoint, right? We are going to make use this endpoint in our service. And after that, we need to create one restful resources, right? So let's click on this new resource. And here you can provide your resource name. Okay, I'm going to take a resource name as products and after that we need some schema right so that schema will have some fields so i need id so this is going to be created automatically and after that created it 
uh, not required and after that name and here we have a type so you can take like faker.js so that like this mock api will create the dummy data for you and here so if you are not satisfied with this name dot full name so i'm going to take like commerce um, commerce product name right and after that author also is not required okay i'm going to take the price of the product and this is also faker.js and let's take commerce okay price right so after that let's click on this create button okay it will create the resource so resource successfully created and now so let's click on this data you won't see the any data because it's empty and now so if you want to create the data just place the cursor here so how many records you required just click on this so here I, it is showing 60 right let's click on this automatically it will fill the records i mean like products so if you want to see the products data just click on this it will show you all the products related data here right so that's it so it is ready now so now i'm going to create project by using spring boot here okay so i'm going to take uh, build a tool as a maven and language as java and i'm going to choose the spring boot version as 3.2.0 because i'm going to make use the rest client okay and after that i'm going to create the project by using some project metadata so i'm going to take a group name as uh, comrade example as demo and after that artifact name is spring uh, rest client okay demo and after that so i'm going to packaging a jar and java version is 70 right and after that i'm going to add the marvin dependency uh, that is like spring web dependency okay so this spring web dependency will have like rest client i'm going to use the rest client right that is the reason we need only one dependency and after that you can add like lombo for setters and getters that's it so you can generate this project and you can import into your id i already imported in my project in my like ide to save the time right so now we need um, rest client bean here right so we can create a rest client uh, using like one of the uh, static create methods okay and after that uh, you will have like eventually you can also like use like rest client builder to get a builder with like further options such as a specifying the http client to use setting a default url path variables and headers and registering like interceptors and initializers right so uh, let's get start this writing like bean okay i'm going to write one bean right so so basically we need one product client um interface okay so i will explain how to create that okay but before that we need a rest client right so let's create the rest client Okay. So this rest client have static create method, right? We have three create methods. One will take a base URL, and one is take rest template. But I need this one. Okay, let's create the base URL here, and okay, let's create the variable. Okay, so this variable okay uh, we need to initialize with our api endpoint that's we created in the mock api okay this one so let's copy this and let's paste here that's it right and now so our rest client uh, base url is ready now now basically we need uh, some http service proxy factory class right so uh, do you know like how to uh, make use this http service proxy factory so basically spring framework will provide us with http service uh, proxy factory so that we can use to generate a client proxy for our http interface okay so uh, that is the reason i'm going to take this http service proxy factory okay So this will have uh, one method that is build builder for method. Okay, 
so I'm going to use this builder for method this will accept rest client adapter method adapter class and which will have a create method and this will take rest client as a param that's it we'll just build this okay and it can return so this factory create client method so our client is product client right this one product client you can just mention the product client that's it right so this product client is a http interface right so uh, i hope like uh, everyone is aware about uh, the spring framework i think so like 6 or like spring boot 3 enables us to define the declarative http services using like java interfaces okay so uh, the declarative uh, http interface includes uh, annotated methods for http exchanges so i'm going to make use that http exchanges okay we can simply express the remote api details using an annotated java interface and the spring will generate a proxy okay that implements this interface and performs the exchanges okay basically that will helps to reduce the boilerplate code right so uh, before we are going to create the uh, product client right so we need basically product entity class right so let's create entity class that is product right so this is i need data for lombok setters and getters right so let's take private int id private string name okay private uh, so i am going to take double okay price here that's it and let's import this data and now we need product client interface right okay this is interface so inside the client package i'm going to create this product client okay so this product client as i explained earlier okay will generate a proxy that implements this interface and performs the exchanges i'm going to make use this http exchange methods here okay so uh, this is the product client uh, to save the time i already created this so this is like straightforward uh, client method because we already know so how the http methods will uh, look like this is for like save this is for like update okay so for the save method we will take like post exchange and this is our request uri and this is put for like updating the product okay and which will contain like id and the request body whereas if you want to find out by id then you can just take the get exchange okay and here we need a path variable that is id and apart from this if you want to find out like all the documents again we need get exchange and if you want to delete the product by id then we need the delete exchange with the help of the path param we will delete it that's it so this is our product client okay now go back to like uh, our bean class and let's import this product client okay so we have imported successfully now we need service class right so let's create one service class so inside the service package i'm going to create our product service right so let's implement this interface that is our product client right so let's import let's implement all the methods here okay now we need a rest client method right so let's take rest client here okay so now we need to initialize uh, inside this constructor i'm going to initialize this rest client okay okay we have a builder method so inside this builder method basically we have base url so this base url again so this endpoint again we need to mention here okay that's it we can just build this right 
now our rest client is ready now so we are going to make use this rest client inside our all the methods okay so rest client so to save the product basically i'm going to use the post okay and we have like URI. API one products okay and uh, so uh, what it will does is basically the rest client uh, post is used to create a post request to the specified URI right so this is our uri and so we have like uh, some content type here okay and after that the body basically we will specify the product here and retrieve so the retrieve if you can see here the retrieve is a rest client response spec so what it will does is this retrieve method sends the request and returns the response spec okay it will return the response spec that will containing the api response okay and this uh, request retrieves the okay this request retrieves the basically this product okay and at the final one two bodyless entity basically uh, if it is wired type then we can use this two bodyless entity right and the difference between like save and update is here we need to specify the path variable okay to update like specific id of the product and to specific product and we have like body and so here we are going to return the product in the body right and the next one is find by id right so we have like rest client get method so we can make use that and again we are having uri okay and you can specify the URI after that we have okay retrieve and after that we have body okay so that is uh, our product class so here you can specify the path variable that's it this get method is used to create a get request to the specified URL here so here we have a URI okay we will specify our URI and the path variable here okay to uh, find like specific id we will pass the path variable after that we have a retrieve method right that is this retrieve method sends the request and return the response spec containing the api response right and after that it retrieves the uh, product right this this one will retrieve the single product and this will pass the response body to this okay product instance that's it right and coming back to like find all so this is also same like as find by id okay but the difference is let's copy this it doesn't contain any id here okay and so this one is basically new parameterized type reference okay so because this one is a list right so that is the reason i am going to take the body as a parameterized type reference here okay and this is find out right the last one is delete so if you want to delete the product we need like rest client delete method and here we will have like uri okay so you can specify api products here and here we will have retrieve method and we have two bodyless entity right and let's remove this return and now we need to specify the id okay and let's specify the id here that's it 
and you can return uh, something like so that's it so this is also ready now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create one controller right so let's create one controller for controller right so so I already created the controller to save the time so this is straightforward I'm not going to explain anything okay so I'm going to make use this product service here to create like all the HTTP related methods right so now let's start this application okay application has been started successfully now I'm going to fetch like all the products here okay so let's hit this okay it's written like all the 60 products right so as we seen in this mock api so we have a 60 products right so all the 60 products has been written successfully now if you want to see like any specific product just search with that specific product okay and if you want to create any product right so let's create some product here okay i'm going to create product by using this post endpoint let's hit this okay so that is 61 right so let's not 61 i think so sorry so let's hit this get endpoint okay check this 61 product has been created successfully right so post also is working fine now let's check the put endpoint right so the 61 i'm going to update t-shirt as a shirt here okay let's hit this okay i got the response and let's check the get endpoint again okay it is updated as a shut so it is also working fine now the last one is a delete one right so let's hit this delete endpoint so i'm going to delete this 61 product okay let's hit this okay product with id 61 has been deleted okay now let's get all the products and check it out how many products are there right 60 products are there right it's working fine guys now so so this is how you can play with the rest client right and so here you are returning the product right not here yeah here so suppose your response is like a response entity right so how the response okay so if our response is response entity like um, like if our if our like handling like the other responses parts like such as status headers then we can fetch the entity as response entity like this right so instead of body what we need to do is we need to take two entity okay so that's it so the same thing we will applicable here as well the client right so like this we can make use the two entity right and still it's giving the error because in the client okay we need to update okay that's it so come back here okay so like this you can use this response entity and okay this is for like consuming like mock api service so what if like if your service running in 
local right so uh, i already having like one local product service okay so so let's say this is a product a credit api application so i'm going to make use this i'm going to like consume this services in my product service right so what i need to do is so i need to do some changes so let me explain so here we have a base url right so this base url we need to change it from this mock api to our local url okay let's comment out and here we need to mention http local host okay that service is running on 8080 that's it and here actually we are implementing this product client right so this is also not required right so you can just okay delete all the override annotations here okay so that's it and let's restart this service because this product cred api also is the same thing okay which will also having like id name and price okay and so this is also going to like provide like cred operations i'm going to consume this uh, product cred operations in my service it's simple so my rest client application has been started successfully now go back here so now let's hit this endpoint okay so this uh, product cred api having only three products 1 2 3 right so same thing let's check all the endpoints this is like find by id this is also working fine and let's post something by using this some data okay so let's take t-shirt so it's created let's get all the product right it's created and now let's update this so what is the 52 as id right let's update this okay so like this uh okay like this you can consume like your local uh, restful services as well so by mentioning the base url like this but this doesn't required any beans like this right so this bean is not required anymore because this bean is required for like uh, to call like mock api service right so if you are dealing with like your local services you can just mention the base url here and after that you can directly make use like your rest client methods that's it okay okay so now so what if like if uh, if your consumer service having like some security right so how to use uh, this security so in your rest client right so now let's open our consumer service my consumer service is product cred api okay so let's add uh, one dependency that is spring boot starter security dependency okay to enable the security we need to add this dependency and after that uh, so this is going to provide like default password okay so and default username so i don't want to use this default username and the password so to override uh, that basically we need to add like uh, okay spring security username okay i have provided the admin username and the password is this one okay and let's restart this application okay once your product cred api is restarted then i will restart my application as well okay that is spring rest client demo let's stop this
okay wait till this product ready base starting okay it is started so now go back to our service okay let's restart this spring rest client demo service okay it started so now when you try to hit this endpoint right okay this endpoint so we need to get like unauthorized error right because we haven't provided any security in our application okay we got some error so let's go back to our console here okay and okay you can see this we got like 401 unauthorized error right so uh, like this we got this error right so to deal with this kind of errors okay in our service what we need to do is we need to work with like a default header method okay so the default header method will take like http headers okay and this will contains the authorization okay and after that so uh, we need to provide like uh, some encoding logic here okay so suppose um, let's provide okay so this is my encode basic uh, method so this will take like username and the password and it will encode username and the password okay that's it so i will use this method here okay and let's pass admin as a username and the password is admin at the rate of one two three right so that's it so we have used this default header and we are providing like uh, authorization so that is encoding basic by using this encoding basic we are using base 64 algorithm okay to encode like our username and the password right so let's restart this application okay so this time we need to uh, access that endpoint okay application has been started let's hit this endpoint okay so this time we got the response right so like this you can uh, work with like uh, spring boot security as well by using this rest client right so now so i'm going to explain about handling the errors so how to handling the errors by using the rest client right so there are two ways uh, like handling the errors okay so one is like um, so we have like uh, default so one is like default status handler method so that is like uh, handling like all the http requests and another one is like on status method so like for each http request like status right so then you can use this on status method okay so first of all i'm going to explain about like um, default status handler method right so let's come down okay so here you will see this default status handler method right we have to be use in the constructor because this is the um, starting part like to initialize this rest client right so here so we need to initialize like our uh, a default status handler right so basically http status code okay so if http status code is uh, like okay if you want to deal with like uh, like some specific errors right so you can okay you can use this error okay so we need like request and response right so this request and response so here you can play with uh, request and response here so uh, what i will do is uh, i will just print some error okay so i will so i will write something like product client uh, error okay so here we have a response dot get uh, get body right so you can use get body or get status but uh, if you want to uh, get like all the data right so you can just write like uh, okay so new string of okay so that's it 
so now see uh, how this will behave so i just uh, use it like default status handler here right so let's restart your application okay application has been started so let's go here and let's so actually so with this id actually product is not available in my database okay so let's hit this okay i got some error so let's go back to your console okay so here okay so you can see this product client okay error product not found for id 4 right so like this uh, uh, we'll be initializing like rest client right so to deal with like all the uh, http requests you can make use this default status handler so okay this is one way so i'm going to remove this so okay this is one way one way of like handling the errors another way is we can use like on status method right so for each http request if you want to deal with like uh, like uh, handling the errors right so then you can make use like on status method so here i have like get yeah find by id right so here what i'm going to do is um, here i'm going to uh, use this on status so after the retrieve method right so here i have like on status so again this same on status method okay so to save the time so let me copy this entire code okay the same logic but so instead of like a default status handler so i'm going to use in specific method right so let's take on status okay let's paste here okay so that's it uh, like this you can use this on status okay so this is also take like uh, some error and request and response and i'm just printing some log error here okay so let's restart this time okay application has been started so let's hit this endpoint again okay we got some error and now let's go back to console okay so now also we are able to see this message right so let's come down here okay so now also it's printed product client error okay so like this you can use this on status method for each http request okay so this is like handling the errors so we have like another one that is like exchange method okay so what is the exchange method basically the exchange method is useful for like um, uh, like situations where the response must be decoded differently depending on the response status okay if you want to play with like request and the response then you can go for like exchange method okay uh, so let me okay, remove this remove this retrieve as well okay so i'm going to use the exchange method here so the exchange method again will take like request and response okay so here so what i'm going to do is here i'm going to take the response okay so we have like um, status code if the status code is same uh, is same code as like http status code we have like value of method so suppose if it is 404 error okay if you want to throw some exception right so then so you can write it suppose i'm going to throw like a new product okay okay product not found exception so i will say that product not found okay so uh, like this you can deal with like different status codes here so otherwise if it is not 404 error if it is a 200 error or sorry 200 status code right so in the else condition directly i will say that so this is a raw response so we need to uh, we need to like map uh, we need to like convert the values here so how we are going to convert the values is we need to write like object 
मैप पर ही है ओके सो मैप पर न्यू ऑब्जेक्ट मैप पर ओके एंड वी हैव लाइक मैप पर डॉट रीड वैल्यू सो दिस विल टेक रेस्पॉन्स डॉट गेट बॉडी ओके एंड प्रोडक्ट डॉट क्लास ओके सो दैट्स इट सो हियर आई विल क्रिएट सम प्रोडक्ट ओके लेट्स असाइन दिस कन्वर्टेड वैल्यू टू दिस प्रोडक्ट राइट सो लेट्स रिटर्न दिस प्रोडक्ट हियर ओके सो इट्स थ्रोइंग देर दिस इज रेस्पॉन्स एंटिटी राइट सो लेट्स मैक्सिमाइज दिस सो वाट आई विज एंटिटी डॉट ओके दैट्स इट राइट सो नाउ सो लाइक दिस यू कैन मेक यूज दिस एक्सचेंज मेथड सो दिस टाइम इंस्टेड ऑफ थ्रोइंग दैट एरर ऑन द कंसोल सो वॉट आई एम गोइंग टू डू इज दिस एरर शुड बी थ्रो इन माई पोस्टमैन कंसोल सो टू डू दिस बेसिकली वी रिक्वायर लाइक ग्लोबल एक्सेप्शन हैंडलर सो वी नीड टू डील विद द ग्लोबल एक्सेप्शन हैंडलर सो इन द ग्लोबल एक्सेप्शन हैंडलर आई विल हैंडल दिस प्रोडक्ट नॉट एक्सेप्शन ओके सो दैट लाइक इट विल थ्रो द एक्सेप्शन इन द पोस्टमैन कंसोल राइट okay so this is my global exception handler we have like uh, two types of exception one is like product not found exception so we need to define the exception handler inside this exception handler we need to define like product not exception and another one is like normal exception right so in my case it should be throw this product not found exception okay so uh, i think this is straight forward i'm not going to explain this and okay let's restart this application okay application has been started so let's hit this endpoint again okay this time we got this exception on the post one console right so uh, like this you can use this exchange method so if you want to play with like request and the response okay so you can use this exchange method right so i just used in a uh, find by add method so you can use uh, in delete method as well as well as you can uh, use in like find all methods okay so depends on the requirement you can use this exchange method okay i hope like i covered like all the scenarios okay okay so thanks thanks for watching so bye have a good day